Hello guys and welcome to another video of Power BI for Sports. Today we're going to be talking about the acute chronic workload ratio using the exponentially weighted moving average. Uh, after my last video on the AC workload ratio, I received so many questions from people I uh, wanted to know about how to calculate this using the exponentially weighted moving average method. Uh, it wasn't easy, I did a bit of research about how to calculate this and Unfortunately, it's not actually possible, to my best knowledge, to calculate this straight in Power BI. But there is a workaround on how you can calculate in Excel. And then obviously, if you have it in Excel, you can then easily import it into Power BI and create all your visualizations. So this is going to look uh, more as a, like an Excel tutorial more than Power BI. But ultimately, you'll be able to visualize this in Power BI without any issues. So for today, I'm going to be using this formula, the, the formula that uh, is for the exponentially weighted moving average. So the moving average of today will be equal to the load of today, uh, which would be just like your total distance or high speed running or whatever metric you have for today. Multiply that by alpha. I'll explain alpha in a minute. And then add 1 minus alpha multiplied by the exponentially weighted moving average of yesterday. Um, in this equation, alpha will be equal to 2 divided by n plus 1, and n would be the time value. So uh, if you're doing it for the acute, uh, acute uh, calculation, you will be using 7, obviously because of 7 days, and then 28 for chronic. Uh, if in your case you're using 6 for acute and 21 for chronic, for example, then that's the value that you're going to use. So use anything that it is for the days that you include in your uh, acute average, uh, or the acute load and the chronic load, just put that into N. Uh, so then just to give a practical example, uh, let's imagine that yesterday's acute exponential weighted moving average was 360 and today's high speed distance was 270. So this is uh, what the equation would look like. Obviously, after replacing all of the values in that formula, uh, if you just want to double check how it works, and then that will give you ultimately your result for the moving average of today. So now let's jump into Excel and I'm going to show you how to create the, the, the calculation. It's not re exactly very easy. It's going to involve a few tricks, uh, uh, a few functions in Excel, but uh, just stay tuned and we'll see how we can create this. So what you're seeing now is just my, my database or my data dump, however you call it, for all of my sessions uh, and for all of my players, of course. And what you will notice is that I only include here the full session uh, drills. So I'm not including the, the training drills inside of this. I'm just including the entire session that the players made uh, for two reasons. First, because it's a lot easier to do this if you just include the full session and there's less room for errors as well and to make any mistakes in the calculations. And also it's just because you don't need drills in your, in your moving average uh, calculation you just need the full the entire session of the day so uh, in your case if you have drills try to make another database or to remove the drills from the database and create one like this because it's going to be so much easier and so much safer as well and obviously uh, you have all of the different metrics that you want to include i'm going to leave the link up here so that you guys if anyone hasn't seen how to create a, um, a database uh, i'm going to leave the link up here but Let's get straight to the point. Let's get on to how to create the exponentially weighted moving average. Uh, I'm just going to clear some, some columns in here. That's just for me. In your case, you're, you're welcome to just calculate all of this in the, in the last column of your database. But I'm just going to put it here so it's nice and clear. So the first one, I'm going to do one for acute, uh, one for chronic, and then the, just the ratio. And the first thing would be to uh, insert a, a new column right next to session date. And this is going to just be the date minus one. Uh, this is going to make more sense in a couple of minutes, guys. But for now, just, just create this column that's just going to be equal to the session date and minus one. So I just want that session date here to just reflect uh, whatever date was here minus one day. So. Uh, just confirm that the day is here is just the same as the session date minus one and then we're going to go into here to calculate the the moving average for the first bit 
So for the first session, uh, the moving average will actually be different. Uh, so as you know from before, the, the, the equation uh, requires that I know the moving average of yesterday, which obviously in the first sessions you wouldn't have. So uh, for me, this would mean that uh, if the session, the, the load of yesterday was zero, then all of this part of the equation would be zero. So that means that for the first session, you just have to calculate the load of today multiplied by alpha. Uh, but I've actually seen some people out there that for the, for the first session, they just put zero. And I've also seen people that just put the same value from total distance uh, or for whatever metric it is, the values from the first session load, they just copy that as the acute, the, the moving average acute value as well. Um, so that's, that's up to you already. But for me, if I, if I strictly abide to the equation that I have here, then this would mean that you have to calculate the load of today multiplied by alpha. So let's just go ahead and put here and multiply the load times alpha. Let's just bring that up here again to avoid any mistakes. So that's 2 divided by n plus 1. So that will be 2 divided by uh, n will be 7 in this case obviously because it's acute, plus one. And that's gonna give us the, the result for the first session. So just drag that across until the first session ends. And that will be the, the acute calculation for the first session. Okay, so now for the interesting part, we're going to finish off the calculation for the rest of my sessions. So we're going to just bring this up here and then we're going to calculate the, the first part of my exponentially weighted moving average. So that will be the load of today. I'm just going to put a parenthesis on first load of today multiplied by 2 divided by n plus 1, which is 7 plus 1. Okay, and then we're going to add uh, 1 minus alpha and multiply by the, the moving average of yesterday. So that'll be 1 minus alpha. Okay, and finally uh, multiply that by the moving average of yesterday. So uh, this is where things might get a little bit complicated for you, but just follow along. So we're going to introduce a VLOOKUP formula inside of this function. And then we're going to VLOOKUP uh, 812. So that'll be uh, the player uh, name that I have in this, in this row. And we're going to hit the AND sign. And we're going to select uh, from the date minus one column, we're going to select the value on that row. So from the date minus one column, just select that date. So instead of the date, the actual date, just select the date of minus one. And then we're going to input a comma here. And for a table array, we're going to put another uh, function, which is the choose function. So in choose function, we're going to open brackets, uh, open this bracket here, and type in columns one and two for our index. Type in a comma. And for our first value, we're going to select the entire A row. So from A1, just drag that across all the way down until the end. And then for our uh, uh, second value, we're going to put the AND sign again. Our, in, this, in this time, we're going to select the session date column. So instead of doing the date minus one like we did before, just select the entire column of session date. So the same thing again, just drag that all the way across down. Perfect. And then after you select those two, just type in a comma. And that will be the, the first, it's like we're telling uh, uh, the VLOOKUP function that this is the first column of our table. And then for our second value of, of our table, we're gonna select, um, the H column, which is where the acute, uh, sorry, the uh, exponential weighted moving average uh, calculation is. So uh, again, select this column where you have the, the moving average acute and drag it all the way down. 
until the end of your database, or you can also input that manually if you know what the last, uh, the last number of your, of your row is. Drag that all the way down. And now you can, you can close that bracket. Perfect. And then finally, just to finish up the VLOOKUP formula, just tell them, put a comma. And for column index number, we're going to select two because we just selected only two columns in our, uh, our VLOOKUP table array. Another comma, and then just put zero for a false. And there we go. So that will be uh, our exponential weighted moving average, acute, calculated for this given session. And there's one more thing, guys, that is really, really important that you do, is that there are certain values in our choose function that we need to lock. So if you come here to this choose function, and then you find uh, the first the value number one uh, cells that I have selected, uh, if you're using Windows, then you just have to select F4, and that's going to lock these values. Uh, if you're using Mac, I honestly don't know how to do it, but uh, you can always just input a dollar sign in between the, the, the column and the row uh, names. So for the, for the value number one, just lock all of those, all of those cells and also for value number two. So that's going to allow you to be able to drag down this formula uh, so that it applies to all the rest of the, of the cells. So just to recap a bit on, on how our formula was built. So obviously the first bit up until here was just my, my, my equation that I, that I showed you before, before. And then you're going to input a VLOOKUP. You're going to select A12, which is, uh, in your case, might just be wherever that player is the player name, and you're going to put this AND sign, and you're going to select D12. So from the same row, select the D, uh, which is the date minus 1. So whatever date minus 1, this is the column that we created uh, at the beginning of the video. That's the, that's the, row, the, the row that you select. And then finally, uh, just select our choose function. And within our choose function, the first value that you put is this bracket here. I'm going to be honest, I don't know what this is called, but this strange bracket, uh, whatever you call it, just put it here and type in 1, 2. Close that strange bracket, and then you put in the value number 1. So the value would be the first column, the entire column of the player name. Uh, log those values, like I mentioned before, the and sign and then the entire uh, session date column. So you, you just drag that across all the way down and lock the values. And then finally, for the value number two, would just be the uh, exponentially weighted moving average. So as you remember from the formula, you need to be multiplying this by the moving average of yesterday. So what we're doing in this formula is looking up the moving average of the previous day for that player. So that's why it's so long and complicated. And then finally, you put in number two. Number two just refers that this is number one and this is number two. So it specifies that it's looking for this column. And then zero, so it returns the exact values. And that's it. Now you'll be able to just drag that across down to the rest of your sessions. And that's going to be calculating uh, successfully your exponentially weighted moving average, uh, in this case for the acute. And then for your chronic, you just have to repeat the same thing. Uh, but obviously what you have to change would be your end value. Because in this case it was 10 for acute and for current we're going to be using a 28. So what we can do here is uh, we can just copy the, the formula from here to there and just make it easier for us. Just copy that and paste it here. And obviously we're going to just change that number 7, we're going to change that for 28. Uh, so remember, this is the, the calculation for the first session. So drag that all the way down for our first session. Perfect. And now for our second, uh, for the rest of our sessions, you can do the same. Just copy that formula. Make sure that you copy from, from the, the function uh, editing bar and not from the directory from the cell. And then you can just copy that into here. And all you need to do is change a, a few things in here as well. So uh, this is going to be the same, G12 multiplied by, and then change the 7s for 28s. And then in your VLOOKUP, that's going to look almost all the same. VLOOKUP A12 and D12, choose 1 and 2. From A and C columns, from the player and session date columns, 
and then we're also going to change this value here because this is looking for my acute uh, moving average in the calculation. So I can just change that for uh, the letter, the letter I. So change the H's for the I or whatever uh, column letter you will have here. And then the rest is kept the same. So just feel free to just uh, copy and paste the value and then quickly just change the numbers that I've just shown you and then press enter. And that's going to be the same calculated for your um, chronic exponential moving average. And then finally, obviously the acute uh, chronic ratio, the easy part, which is just divide the acute moving average by the chronic and move that across. And then finally, guys, once you have uh, all your table uh, and all your columns calculated as we've done before, uh, all you need to do is just input that into Power BI and just create your AC ratio uh, graph. Uh, I've already covered this in another video. I'm going to leave the link up here as well. Uh, so that you know how to create this dashboard about how to input the, the acute and chronic uh, calculations and to visualize this with, a, with an area graph, which is simply that you, you create your area graph. But in this case, all you have to do is input the acute and chronic exponential moving average that, that we've just created, the two columns, and then the acute chronic worker ratio over here. And that's going to be able to give you this, this uh, graph right here. So just make sure you follow that link that I'm, that I'm, that I'm leaving up here. So that you know how to create the visualization and then to finish guys there's two things uh, two important considerations that i want to to let you know before you go ahead and try this and the first one will be that every player must have a value for every date so in this example on my left you can see for example uh, if you have one player missing from that session you will have to input that player name here manually and then you're just going to type in uh, if the player wasn't there then you're just going to have to type in zero for the other columns uh, otherwise, when, when the next day the player trains and the formula is trying to find the moving average of this player of the day before, uh, it's either going to return an error or it's going to give you the value of another player. So make sure that for every session when you dump the data, uh, make sure that all the players are there. Any player that didn't train must be in this list. And then the second consideration is that every date must also be included in the data dump. I know this is a bit annoying, but this is the only way, guys, that to my best knowledge, this can be done. If anybody knows an easier way, a better way, just drop a comment below. I'm happy to, to engage in this community where we can exchange ideas. But the way that I'm proposing, you must include every date in the data dump. So in days like this, for example, if you have the 18th and then you jump straight into the 20th, that's not going to be able to, to find the previous day moving average that we mentioned before. And again, it's going to return an error. So if it's, for example, if it was a rest day, you didn't train and you want to, uh, you have to edit the table, just enter all the player names and insert zero on all the columns. Uh, it shouldn't take you too long. And it's really important so that the, the, the measures and the functions are not altered and they don't return any errors. So that's it for me today, guys. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Again, I'm curious to know what you guys think, if this is too annoying or this is worth doing in order to, to obtain this valuable data. Uh, and again, drop me a message on Twitter or LinkedIn if you have any questions or requests for new videos. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.